Hello, and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Janice, and I make videos on my experiences in college, graduate school, and now as a full-time software engineer in the tech industry. And I mentioned in my video discussing my job hunt and career change that in terms of salary and leveling, I didn't feel that my PhD puts me ahead by much if at all in my career. And I wanted to explain this a little bit more and really focus on the opportunity cost of going for a PhD, especially now when the tech industry is so hot and new grads with bachelor's degrees are getting amazing compensation packages right out of school. I'm going to first focus on salary and leveling. So if you just listen to that part, you might think it's not worth it at all to get a PhD. And in the second half of the video, I will go over specific ways. I think it's completely worth it to go for a PhD. So stay tuned. Okay. So I get questions all the time about the cost of a PhD and one email I got recently explicitly asked about the opportunity cost, because not only are you not making a lot of money while you're in school and going for your PhD, you're also potentially leaving on the table compensation packages that could be over like 200 K. I thought I'd use Google as an example, which I don't think is unreasonable or unattainable. Of course, if you go to a private company or a startup, you won't be getting RSUs, which is income that the company pays you in the form of stocks. You may get stock options that you can exercise if, and when the company goes public, but that's a huge and very valuable chunk of your compensation package that you won't be getting. And on the flip side, there are plenty of companies that give compensation packages much larger than Google's. So because Google has a very standard package for new grads, it makes it very straightforward to do the calculations and run the comparisons. Let's just consider gross pay for now. If you have the standard high cost of labor new grad offer from Google in 2022, meaning let's just say you got a job in one of their high cost of labor markets, like the Bay area, New York city, you'll have a base of 142 K and an RSU package of 100 K vesting over four years. You'll also get a sign on bonus of $15,000 and a targeted annual bonus of 15% of your base salary. If we look just at what gets invested, the 100 K vests in a front loaded schedule, which at Google is 33% your first year, 33% your second year, 22% your third year and 12% your fourth year. And by vesting, that means by the end of your first year, you would have 33% of 100 K invested at the end of your second year, you would have another 33% invested and so on. So by the end of the four year investment period, the company would have given you all 100 K in the form of stocks. And remember that with all of these calculations, I'm not considering added refreshers, which is more stock that you get from reviews or promotions. And I'm also not considering increases in the base salary, which you would also get when you're promoted. So I do think this is a pretty conservative calculation that I'm about to do. Of course, some companies don't give refreshers and some companies don't give any stock at all. So you want to do the calculations for yourself based off of your own compensation projections and goals, but you really ought to still invest some of your money. If your company isn't giving you stock, why and how to do it is a conversation for another time, but it's one of the easiest ways to grow your net worth. Now back to the Google offer. How often your RSUs vest depends on the RSU package with 100 K total RSUs, you get monthly vesting. So during the first two years, which are the 33% vesting periods, you'll get $2,750 vesting per month. And let's just use a conservative return rate of 17% taken from their roughly 10 year return rate. At the end of your first two years, you'll have roughly $77,000 invested. The next year you get about $1,800 per month. And the last year you get a thousand dollars per month. So at the end of your first four years working at Google, you'll have around $150,000 in Google stock. Now let's say your PhD would take you six years. We want to compare your gross income at the end of six years. If you didn't get any more in stock, and your $150,000 just sat there for another two years with 17% gains at the end of the sixth year, you would have about $200,000 in Google stock. 
On top of the 142,000 base salary, you're getting plus 15% as bonus and the one time 15K sign on bonus, you would have made, not considering expenses and taxes, almost $1.2 million. If you had gone to do your PhD right after getting your bachelor's, you might have been making around 30K maybe a year, maybe around 60K if you got a nice internship over the summer instead of staying at school to do research. But again, these are very rough numbers. And even if you did an internship every summer of your six years in grad school and you made 60K per year, you'd gross $360,000. And remember that none of this is automatically invested. So you aren't making anything in interest unless you are investing yourself. As you can see, pursuing a PhD comes with a potentially very large opportunity cost. Now comes the question, would the compensation package and your level after you get your PhD be enough to compensate for the six years when you aren't making a tech industry salary and not investing and not getting promoted? The short answer is no. A new grad PhD at many companies gets you started as if you were promoted once. So if you're starting as a junior or just plain software engineer with a bachelor's and no industry experience, a PhD with no years of industry experience might get you a starting title as a senior or whatever the next level is in the leveling chart. And depending on the company and your interview performance, you could end up getting down leveled. So if you want to work in industry and you're trying to find the fastest way to climb the career ladder, for you, it may be to go into industry right out of college. A master's will likely take two years, a PhD will take five to seven years or more, and by the time you enter the workforce, you will be at the same level as your classmates who graduated with you and chose to go straight into industry right after getting their degrees. You may even be behind some of them if you like didn't interview well and got down leveled. Okay, so why even get a PhD if you just wanna go into industry and start climbing the career ladder? The first reason, and it is completely valid, is that you just want to. Really, if you are passionate about a topic and really wanna spend five plus years doing research in that field and you can afford it and you are okay delaying starting your career, I say just go for it. If I've come to realize anything since I've started working, it's that there are so many more important things in life than work. I always wish I knew exactly what I wanted to do and what interests me because I've always thought that my interests were too broad and I don't think I had the best reasons to go to grad school. but. If you know that you want to get a PhD and there's a particular topic or field that you are really interested in, don't let me convince you not to go for it. The second reason is that you might want to get a research position. If you are interested in doing research and want to get a research position in either academia or in industry, getting a PhD is likely the most logical thing to do. I've interviewed for research teams and they really do prefer, if not require, candidates to have PhDs. So definitely keep that in mind if you want to set yourself up to do any type of research in the future as a career. The third reason is that you just want to have more control over which field you go into. This definitely varies case by case because I've seen some people with bachelor's degrees get exactly the job that they want right after getting their degree. and. I'm also not saying that you won't have a lot of control over your career if you don't go to grad school, but grad school not only gives you a deeper understanding of a subject matter that interests you, but it also gives you time to explore adjacent fields, do internships to build up a network and explore different parts and perspectives within that field. And I think it can make you more desirable of a candidate and you may have more options for jobs. So you might be able to be more selective about where and how you start your career after you graduate. I have no idea what I would have done with just a bachelor's because I didn't really feel like I was an expert at anything. And I also did not have a solid idea of what kind of job I wanted to do after college. So knowing me, I probably would have just taken whatever job I could have landed, which in retrospect, I'm glad I didn't do. I'm pretty thankful I 
spent time in grad school building up experience and interest in a few different areas. So when I interview, I actually target a few different types of positions and I like that I have that flexibility. So this is where I'm going to end this video. If you have questions about the job hunting process, how to negotiate, feel free to shoot me a message or to leave your questions in the comment section below. I have a lot more to say on growing both your career and your net worth and how to find a job in the tech industry that lets you do that. So definitely let me know if you have any questions and I hope you found this video useful. As always, please hit the like button if you enjoyed the video and subscribe if you haven't yet subscribed. Thanks for sticking with me to the end and I will see you in the next video. Oh boy.